It's all right, Sparky girl. It's over. And they this can always rebuild. Anymore. The only ones around here who remember me are ghosts. That's not true. No, it is. But that's all right. Truly, it is. Everything for a season and all that. And I miss the people I knew. The people who've moved on. I want to see them again. I think I will take Pete Nochop on his offer and head into the West with him. Shelmiston doesn't need Morris Lupton any longer. Morris Lupton, you will not give up. You have been granted a precious responsibility and you will honor it. Uh, Sparky? I'm sorry about that. Remember when I told you I was mostly Sparky? I am, but... But... Mostly. Then what else are you? I am the rock that you stand on. The wood you people built this town from. The oh. magma bubbling beneath your feet. Okay. I am Selmiston. And right now I want to erupt. But I have also made connections to the things that live here. No, you're here. open with that, damn it. Connections I want to keep alive. I need you, Morris. All right, so this took I... a turn I did not see. Well, uh... And I'm still your Sparky. And I need you, Morris. We all do. Oh, Sparky. I know you feel forgotten. I know you want to move on. I do too, but but I can't until I wrap up this last bit of unfinished business. Will you? Will you try one last avenue with me? If we still can't find a solution, then... Then I'll be done. It'll all be done. And we can go into the West together. Please. All right, Sparky. Yeah, I One have no problem with that. Try. Again, you start but who else with that. Is there to talk to? Aggie. Aggie? But where is she? I mean, she's everywhere, isn't she? She is. But I can sniff her out. I just need some mementos. But where would we find mementos from back then? The museum. Oh. Of course. Back to your museum, Morris. All right, but again, if the island wanted help, you should have opened with that, or at least said it earlier than when it's the last minute. All right, I have my goggles on and I'm ready to play. My name is Sloth One Five Four. Welcome back to I Am Dead. Last episode, we tried to actually I could show you everything. We tried to convince Sam, 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 to become the islands the uh, to replace aggie who we're looking for this episode sam says she wants na she wants nature to take its courts and see the volcano erupt she's fine with that but in between the the talk with us and sparky in between sam and aggie it's revealed that part of shell it is the island itself that sent sparky's spirit along with parts of itself to find morris to find a replacement and if that's information we had earlier, the island, that would have changed a lot of the conversations. So we are here to speak with Aggie. We're going to look for five items that hold her memory or something like that. And we are going to try and save the island. Oh, free entry. All right, this is, oh, this is Cersei Jackson. Cersei is back on, sh oh, nope. Before I do that. If you are not liking this video, comment, like, and subscribe. It does help the channel. Check out the description. I'll have a link to the playlist for this series and other games I played on my channel. Tell me in the comment section what you think about the game. And do you think the conversations with all the other spirits would have changed if we had that key information early? All right, now I'm going to read Cersei's uh, description. Cersei Jackson is back on Shummerston after a lifetime away. Her mom worked the shrimp 
crawlers and her dad was from the famous banking family in the old town. So she left the island for university to read history at Cambridge but didn't finish her degree. Instead she ran off with the circus, touring northern Europe with her innovative and daring equestrian act, her collection of Titus and Sprangly leotards is now in the V and A museum. But time took its toll and she returned to Shovelston looking for a quieter life. She found it in a museum, the place that first ignited her love of history. She's, she knows Morris has done a good job and respects his vision, but is keen to add to the collection. A study of the fish people, a history of the bracken harvest, ethical shrimping, she can't wait. That's good. Keep the museum alive. What am I looking for? Oh. Well, don't yeah. suppose I'll ever look at Aggie's room the same way again, will I? Morris, no, you probably take won't. Take a look at those skulls, please. The skulls? But they have memories inside them? Oh, that's rather morbid, Sparky. It is. Not quite. Look, I didn't explain this before because I felt things were confusing enough, but... That slicing is a bit more powerful than I've led you to believe. Well, what do you mean? Well, we aren't limited to memories of people who are alive. People are bounded by time, but memories aren't. Check it out. Good to know. All right, so we're going to dive into the memory of this skull. Shemerston, okay. Bronze Age Human Skull. Oh. Okay, this is a lot. Oh, I didn't think dead stomachs could get queasy, but here we are. Where are we, Sparky? In the past. When are we, Morris? This is Shelmiston in Aggie's time. You should be able to find some memories of her here. You are some dog, Sparky. <laughs> yep, she really is. All right, so we're in Shelverston in the past. The Hunters. This is... Oh, not the village elder and widely respected for her advice and wisdom. Oh, only one? Oh, so we're going to go into a lot of different pasts. Because this is only a fraction of what this guy remembers. And I think all the items that we need to find will be in the overworld. So we're going to listen to the old elder. It was the worst night in the world when Aggie was born. It began in the old village, the one swept away by the rivers of fire. The ground oh. shook and the earth split open Memory of and spat sparks. The sun hid and the huts burst into flame as we fled. Yeah, you should use stone. No, I actually that would melt. Would all die. Everyone washed in the burning orange death. And Aggie's mother howling with the pain of the child coming. We made it as far as the cliff top by the sea. The mountain was still roaring and roaring. The rock ran in rivers toward the sea. The air smelled of death and poison. Again, this is why I'm surprised the other ghosts didn't take up the job. Because people are going to die. A lot of them. But Aggie was perfect. Small and angry. Her tiny fists pummeling the air. I used my knife to cut the cord. Aww. We chose a spot for the new village closer to the beach. The burning rivers cooled to pumice and black glass. Okay. I made sure everyone knew that a life that began in this way would be special. Not everyone believed me, but Aggie proved me right. Oh, that's sweet. I want to inherit. I'm going to inherit my mother's my knife. My goodness, giving birth like that must have been awful. What a terrifying situation. Hmm. So, where do you think that knife is? Should we look around here, or...? No, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen that knife before. 
It's Back in the museum. The museum, I reckon. Okay, Morris. Let's go. All right. Awesome. So that's how we're going to do this. Back to the museum. So where's this knife? No. No. Here. Here it is. Bronze Ritual Knight. The knight has been passed down to generations of Selmish Thin for as long as anyone's known. Always entrusted to the person on the island thought to be the best look to look after it. Although his origins and original purpose have been lost to time, it's always felt an important piece of Selmish Thin's history. It was the Elder's Knife. Used to bring the person who stopped the eruptions into existence. Beautiful. And to think that people had not long stopped using flint tools when this was made. There is so much history in this knife. Ooh. I'd love to see what else it got up to. Well, if you... If we're able to... What the hell is this? I'm getting the scent of Grenkins again, okay. Morris. I'll pop up to let you know when we're close to one. All right, we found the first one, and I'm going to find this first Grenkin. But I want to see, what the hell? Javier, Ginny Javier, a strange creature, is actually a regular skate that has been manipulated and carved into resemble a small imp-like creature. During the golden age of the sea exploration, unscrupulous sailors would make these and then sell them on their return to Europe, claiming them to be the true specimen of an exotic creature from exotic land. Okay. Alright. Onion. Oh, this cheater! Who is this? Alistair, you cheating bastard. Look at that. Yep. There we go. Found the first Grankin. Not that many. Ten. Okay. There's going to be a few. Five items. So I'll find two for each time. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much what the game will be about. We're going to find Grankins. And we're going to search through memories. Oh, there's a snake inside this thing. All right, found my second Grankin. Still don't know what this will do, but I hope it does something good. There's someone inside the diving bell. I don't know how you got in there. All right, I found the third one just because I wanted to. I've also just noticed that these uh, exhibits, we've been to every place about this, except for this manor, but we've known all of, we met the camel and everything. Okay, that was, I was never gonna get that. <laughs> I 
I know I keep saying I'm going to leave. I'm going to go get the me next memory, but I just can't. Not right now. My brain is too preoccupied with this. Yeah, Morris was here for everything. He may not have been the focus, but he was here for everything that happened on this island. Going to the second memory. I got enough Grinkins. Oh no! I oh oh well, too late. We'll go to this first. Whose memory are we gonna go through now? This is a big island. Well, this is a big settlement, I should say. All oh, the ceremonial stone. Okay, a fish person. Crick. Crick is one of the few fish people to regularly, regularly, regularly. Hmm? I'm just gonna give up on that word. Visit the village and share knowledge with the villagers. Aggie's friend. Of course we watched her. We had heard of her birth and seen her on the shore. Her feet sometimes in the seawater, her body in the sun. Huh. We did not show ourselves at first. As a test, we left a mirror on the black shore, born of the volcano on the same day as her, and waited to see what would happen. To see if it called to her. Well, she picked it up, turned it from side to side. She took it home. The next time I saw her, I introduced myself. We sang together, and I showed her how the mirror worked. How, if you emptied your mind and thought of air and light and sea, you would see things in its surface. How things would unfurl in the future. Aggie was better at mirror gazing than any of us sea folk. Really? She Go saw for a girl, her own daughter not yet born, as leader of the dry folk. I told Aggie to keep on gazing into that mirror, that one day the island would need something more than a leader. All right, so the fish people were behind what happened to Aggie. Oh, I had a box of rocks that looked like that mirror somewhere. Where did I put it? All right, so a box of rocks. Oh, I had to hold it, I forgot. Back to the museum. Arthur, come on. No, it's not going to be that one. There we go. All right, four more to go. How did she get this? These are all things we found in our, I see a lot of things we found on our journey through all this. Just here, 
like this. The cricket ball. Get the one here. Oh, got the Grankin. Not a favorable shape or color. This is Greg's camera. Here? I can have it. Alright, there's only one more Grankin to find. I'm still trying to find this rock. I promise you guys, I have not forgotten. Alright, well, I found all the Grankins. Hopefully that, that wasn't just busy work. Ah, this is not going to be another episode. I just had to do this with you guys here. Okay. Where the fuck is this rock? Oh, here it is. Here's the mirrored rock. That took me a while. Whoa, this thing is really powerful, Morris. Can you feel it? No. On to the next memory. I no longer have to look for the Grankin so we can get through this nice and simple. We haven't seen anyone look sad yet. Right. The hunters. Inibe is giving Aya a bow lesson. Loni is sharpening his harpoon and Barwall is pretending preparing dried Marlow meat. Alright, so this is Ibini. The chief hunter of the village. No one can outdraw Ibini with a bow. Except for Aggie. Oh, that's Aggie's daughter. Except for Aggie. I was always fearless. My mother Aggie told me there was nothing I couldn't do. With Otsul and without, I hunted the deer in the woods and the hares on the mountain, all before I had taken my first lover. Okay. And younger still, one time Aggie had me knock her tooth out when she was in terrible pain. 
I didn't mind even when the blood poured out. It was easy for me. Spears and knives were my nature. Death and courage were my meat and drink. I knew about Aggie's mirror, of course, but did not believe all of it. When Aggie warned us the Mauler was sick and there would be fewer calves for the following years, none of us listened. It was to be my first cull. I wanted their blood. It was my nature. We would not take less of the Morlo just because an old woman told us to. Really? She came to the beach after the Morlo slaughter. Her hair wild, eyes burning with fury. Raged and shouted like a woman out of her mind. We had killed too many, she said. Then she left the village. Told us she was done with all of us. Forever. Uh, now famine. As Otsul marked me with oil and blood. I did not mourn my mother leaving. I was young and foolish, and the sight of her ashamed me. But of course, I did not see what was to come. Oh, was the old woman with the magic mirror right? To think that they were still having the same arguments about the Moro way back in the Bronze Age. I yeah, must have much. sensed the trouble ahead. Maybe she was trying to find a way to prevent it. Yep, she was, but people don't listen till the trouble hits them in the face. All right, back to the... Back to the world. All right, so we got to find this thing. Thinking about where it could be. Oh. Not on the camel. Yeah, not on the camel. Maybe this one? Oh, can't turn that off. Wait, it is in this one because it's a Marlow. This one, bone carb Marlow oil lamp. What a beautiful object! Delighted to have it in our museum. It was no, it's a nice thing, but it's probably uh, a precursor to a horrible thing that's about to happen. So the famine's gonna hit. Ah, oh, this person looks concerned. Slightly. Alright, let's keep looking for whoever's memory is going to come next. Oh, the shepherd. Or the goat pen. Oh, it's Krog again. She was alone, and I would bring her food sometimes some fire and sea urchins. She would make dry food and we would eat it together. Textures unlike any we knew that yeah. broke apart in your hands and in your mouth. Yeah, she left her friends and family we behind because would they wouldn't listen. together, make tea together. We became her family. The dry folk left her alone. Oh, they were foolish. She had a companion for a few seasons, a hind who came down from the mountain and slept at her fire. And then for a few more, a golden hair that ate from her hand. Ah. Oh. One night we all felt it. Those of us in the water and those above. The island waking, rumbling, alive again, more furious than before. Well. I found Aggie awake, tending her fire, unsleeping, unresting, staring into her mirror. 
She told me she'd seen the island sinking into orange fire and boiling sea, lost forever above and below. And again, this is the what I've been saying. And our town in the sea caves, all gone. Exactly what I've been fucking saying. These other ghosts are just fucking selfish. Aggie went to the shore and blew the sinistral shell, calling our people up from the water. Aggie sang for them the oldest song, and we spoke for some time. That night, the sea and sky was all the same color, a deep gray blue like a mackerel's back without the glitter. Yeah, this volcano's As about to fucking blow. Aggie left the beach to return to her people, to tell them what must be done. And they're probably not going to listen. So we're looking for a... Uh, Conch. I, I'm not sure. I want to see what happens next. Well, you're gonna have, have to. to. Morris. They're probably not gonna listen. Oh, I'm gonna find this shell first. No, 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 maybe. Here? Oh yes, here. Sinistral's shell. We did it! Such a small thing. But it changed the entire course of our island. Saved it. Well, it saved the people on it. Alright, last memory. Then we can talk to Aggie and see if she can help us save the island again. Oh, fish person skull. Feeling it's gonna be Aya, her daughter again. Oh, here. Oltsu's story. Oltsu, the village elder in charge of passing down the history and stories of this village to the next generation. We heard the shell and knew Aggie had returned. Ibni was the leader then. It had taken many seasons, more than Ibni. we would have liked, but... There were finally enough Morlo again, and our village was growing. We were strong. Oh, you mean the... Yep. Some of the younger ones didn't know Aggie, and didn't want to hear her. Called her a moon-shot and crone, but Ibni looked in her mother's face and saw the truth of it. The end would come. The earth was growling again. There would be hot rivers of death and clouds of poison. Okay. Yeah, but listen Aggie to her. Us the answer. She would give herself to the island. Ibni's voice shook. Surely a deer or a goat would be enough. The year's finest blackest calf. Aggie cast down her eyes and shook her head. We all knew. Yep. I offered my blade, but Aggie turned me away. She took her knife that had cut her own cord the night the volcano last erupted and wrapped Ibni's fingers tight around the bone hilt. It must be you, Ibni, she said. And it must be now, before the sun comes up. This day, this morning, for we are all gone. Oh, so the village, they could get the, the thousand people, days. The island. Wait. Aggie embraced her daughter. Ibni whispered something, but I could not catch the words. Both women's faces shone with tears. Aggie Wait, sat on so the ceremonial Morris stone. Can be the island. The tears streaming now Historia. from all of us. Aggie delivered her final message. She told us her body must not be burned or given to the sea, but laying in the earth of the island beneath Oh, so it was our fault. Us, it Ibni was more was fault a bit. And then I realized it was not just Ibni. The whole island was trembling under our feet, waking up. Aggie told Ibni to be quick. The end was coming. As Aggie took Ibni's hand and guided the knife to her side, 
we saw the fish folk rising from the sea, hundreds of them, so many. I had no idea there were so many. Except you didn't really pay attention. Adi was quiet the whole time, but Ibni cried out. A sound of longing and hurting from her heart like I had never heard. Then she fell silent, and as Aggie's life poured from her body, the island and everything on it fell suddenly still. Utterly still. We wept then, Okay. In sorrow it's a sparky light at the beginning of this. Then the fish folk were among us, countless, numberless. One embraced Ibni, holding her up as it seemed her own legs might give way. When the sun came up that day, Land and sea folk stood together for the first time, talking and singing the old songs, Aggie's songs, together. Ibni and the fish folk took Aggie up onto the mountain. They laid her in the peat alongside the knife okay. and all the things so she would need on her journey. Morris did mess up a bit. Ibni watched over Greg Aggie was for right. days afterwards, before she was covered. She placed a sacred carved stone. Aggie's we have to find that inside her mother's mouth to guide her and help her keep the mountain still forever. And so it was. Uh. Oh, Aggie. Now that's bravery. It really is. So we have to find the little rabbit. Oh, we're going deep. Here it is. The carved hair. Hey, Sparky, it feels a bit mm, what disrespectful looking inside Aggie's body like that. You were the one who dug her up and put her on a plinth, Morris. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but I... But I uh... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Relax, Morris. This body isn't Aggie anymore. She's long past needing this old thing. Hmm. Well, all right then. It is a bit disrespectful, but we have to do it to understand what happened to people. All right, girls, time to find Aggie. Okay, Morris. I'll level with you. We absolutely didn't need to find Aggie's mementos in order for me to sniff her out. She's here, waiting for you. She has been this whole time. But then, wh why did we need to visit the Bronze Age? Aggie thought it was important for you to see those memories. Oh. So you would understand her path before you met her. But also, wasn't it cool? It was. <laughs> that it was. The things I've seen now. Oh, Sparky, thank you so much. Yes, I was right two episodes to ago. This for was a while also there, that I Morris was worried that being dead was gonna be boring. can accept you are the mission welcome, that he's about Morris. to get. Okay, so, shall we go say hello to Aggie? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, let's visit Aggie. Come on, girl. Oh, she's just there. Okay, hi, Aggie. Morris, Sparky. It's so good to see you both. Hey, Aggie. You, uh, wait, you, you know me? Of course I do. Morris Lupton, one of the best loved men in the history of Shelmerston. Really? With the very finest dog. Uh, me? Oh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Come now. Let's go out of this place into the air. Okay, let's go. So Morris was so Sparky was right. Morris was one of the most loved the people on this. The one part of Shelmerston that looks just the same as the first day I saw it. I suppose it always will. Oh, I love this beach. It's always been my favorite beach. I'm gonna go run. I would love to have a dog's enthusiasm Aggie, and happiness. Look at Sparky. She's shining. Mm, that's the hope. And the joy shining out of her. Dogs are That's so it, happy. Isn't it? The, the, the point of all of this 
It is hope, home. This island, it chose the two of you just as it chose me. And where will you be heading now? Uh, heaven or, or something? Heaven? What's that? Well, I, I don't quite know how to explain it. But to me, it would be an awful lot like this beach. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm hoping to see Ibni, my daughter. It's been a very long time, but I remember her. We never forget the ones we love, do we, Morris? No, we do not. No. I don't suppose we do. I think she wants something, Morris. Huh. Would you look at that? <laughs> I just found a tennis ball in my pocket. Here you are, girl. Blast that thing across the ocean. And I guess both Morris and Sparky are now the curators of the island. This has been I Am Dead. Ricky Haggett and Richard Hogg. I hope I said your name right. You did a really good job. This is a beautifully done game and a very happy story. Morris, who didn't feel like he was going to be remembered forever, is one turns out is one of the most loved people on the island his memory is so integrated with everyone else that he was that he knew all their stories like the bench said he collected the stories of the island him digging up aggie could have done something to the island but we'll never be sure but for the most part morris knew all the people he had to talk to he knew the story of everything on the island he was the curator of the museum and his replacement cersei she went out into the world because he taught her to love history. So, I'm gonna, uh, actually, let's keep going. I didn't have any real problems with this. There were no major bugs. Everything went smoothly. Only issues I, only issues I had were player issues. I, uh, the angle for the Grankins and the one riddle I did. I don't like the riddles. He's a weirdo. And it, I don't like to be timed when I do things. I hate it. I hate, I hate it. So, there's Ogden, that's his name, Ogden, and his wife. Again, all these things, this and this looks like it was a small team, so good on you guys for making something so amazing. The art style is very distinct. I love the puzzles. I love Annapurna games like this. Their other game, Ho Ho Come, check it out. I have the link to it in the description. There's another game like this where it's varying art, well, varying this, each stage and each art style is very different. This one kind of stuck to stuck to a similar motif, but we learned these beautiful stories. And Morris, I think he accepted his place as the island curator after everything that happened. Oh, I'm trying to think of more things to say. Story was amazing. I love it. This is a very nice story. Oh God trying to get the, i'm trying to talk through all this so that i can oh god i'm not that good think think sparky should have told morris about her situation with the island sooner that would have changed some of the conversations but i guess it was he didn't need to know it because he was already chosen for that i don't get why she lied to him about not being able to be the custodian, but he kind of fell for that on his own. All right. Voice actors, the voice actors were amazing in this. Can, good job on you guys. Hmm. Uh, what else? I can't vamp for this song. Oh, the game's music was very relaxing. A few times I, when I was playing, when I was tired, I felt nearly fell asleep. But 
else? Come on, world, give me inspirations. Come on, hurry up, credits. I need you to move faster. Uh, let's see. Everything that the people that he interacted with, everything they did was integral in moving the island forward. I'm glad the island loves its people. And uh, come on, come on, get me, come on, get me through this. Annapurna Interactive, another great game you guys produced. Love you guys. That's why there's a multi playlist on my channel. Check it out if you want to. God, I want to sit through these credits with you guys because they have these pictures and I'm looking for lore and things. Oh, let's see. Oh, God. I don't have any real issues with the game at all. Only problem. Yeah, nothing with the story, nothing with the uh, game itself. My only hook hang up is that <clears throat> Sparky didn't tell uh, Morris about her connection to the island earlier. I said that before. And other than that, it was a great game. Come on. I vant for long enough. Come on, give me this. Okay, so we're here we are at the end of the credits. If you like this video and you like this series, comment, like, and subscribe. It does help the channel. Check out the description. I'll have a link to the playlist for this series and other games I play on my channel. Tell me in the comment section what you think about the game and uh, how are you doing today? And also how you feel about Morris's, that final scene with Morris, how he, how uh, he finally accepted the job he was meant to take. So, I'm going to get out of here. If you made this far in the video and you made it this far in the series, Brian thanks you. And yeah, we'll see you next time.